unfortunately it is a dying breed and the public doesn't get to really see who we really are and what we really do because we're not going to brag about it. I told Robert Clay early on, I said, life's not fair, get used to it. Never has been, never will be. It's, it's incredible to be a part of a family ranch that's been in existence for 150 years. kid sitting right there, he's seventh generation on the ranch. There's not a lot of people that can say that. Awesomeness. I don't know. My name's Robert Forrest, and I am the horse trainer for Stuart Ranch. And on a day to day basis, we ride all the two year olds and start all the colts. And just get on the Brandon. Let's go to the Brandon and then roll back to that part of it because i feel better there we'll gather the cows and then we we take we take the cows and calves and separate them and we put the cows in one pen and the calves in the other and we typically will have a group of about 50 to 60 calves in one pen there's two draggers and two two flankers on each side and then the guy that's dragging will catch a calf by two feet drag the calf out flankers fl flank them down they're holding the calf down the guy will come in and cut if it's a bull calf they'll cut the bull calf someone else brands then someone else comes and gives their vaccinations our vaccination protocol is very important as it primes the immune system of these calves the two vaccinations i give one is a nasalgen which goes in the nostril, and then the other is a solid dose implant for pink eye and foot rot. My daughter-in-law has, has been able to help us most of the time, and she gives the other two vaccinations. We're very careful to change needles. Caps up, done. It's, I mean, 30 seconds at the most. It's a lot about timing. Timing and working together as a as a, you are a team at, that you're paired up with your other flanker or dragger so that's where having a good crew can make branding very very enjoyable bob he always cuts on its, on one side of the fire and blake he normally cuts on the other no most of the time i'm either cutting or flanking on the ground crew and uh <laughs> it's okay we'll work through it that's no, all right we'll work through it my first branding i was i couldn't tell you how old i was i couldn't even tell you what horse i was on but i remember getting to drag uh, i like to watch whenever 
young guys like late a few years ago when he drove his first calf. I probably missed half of them, but it was still one of the funnest things I've ever done. I can't wait till my little boy starts dragging. I mean, as a little kid, they make you feel like you're the hero, I guess. Even if you're missing, they're still encouraging you and still, it's, I mean, that's what branding is, is it's, it's, it's a time we get our calves worked, but it's serious and we've got to get a job done, but it's still about bringing the next generation and teaching the kids and, and showing the next generations how to continue what we do and so that's going back to my first branding like it's it all started there Is it cool to watch your dad? Mm -hmm. Where is he at right now? That's not me, that's all I know. I don't know anything else. I've always been with my dad. I've been fortunate to work around some good guys all my life. Now I get to see him grow up and do it. He had his arm broke with his tooth, had his cast, and his fingers just stuck out of his cast. And they when I took the cast off his fingers like that because he held the rope all the time. I just have always loved doing it. That's what I look forward to with Slade and my new girl that I'm going to have now. To, to let them grow up this lifestyle. It's pretty cool. When you love it, it's not work. When you asked me to do this, I was trying to think of what, what I would say, how I would say it, or what kind of what I thought you might ask. And the only thing that ever just kept coming to my mind is just, I, I love it. I crave it. Like it, it's, it's, as I said earlier, it, I can't explain it to you. I don't know, but it's just that, that feeling of the excitement of branding. There's so much tradition involved in it, and I think we all respect that and the opportunity to, for the com camaraderie, and we get to eat well, and that, that's just the way it's always been. You know, we put food on the table and try to feed everybody a good meal and um, get to work together, and that's, that's a blessing. I do love my job. I do love my job. There's a lot of, of um, ups and downs, but the ups far outweigh the downs, and the downs don't last very long. It's challenging. I love the challenges. There are days when I don't think I do, but I do. I love the challenges. I love, I, there's, years ago I laughed and said, you know, I really get paid to do this. Um, yes, we all have to make a living, but there's nothing in this world I would rather do. Nothing. Um, and it's not a job. It, 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 it isn't a job. It, it is more of a commitment. And that's truly what it is. It's committing yourself to being the best you can to take care of what God has given us to take care of. And that's all it boils down to. We are stewards um, and nothing more. And so we are here to do the best job that we can possibly do, given the conditions that we have.
Well, I dug my heels into a concrete thought. Marauders' clothing's all I bought, and I'm objecting to most objections. And I spun my wheel right off the spoke. You know, bad luck is life's best joke, and I ain't never found no penny facing up. Life is hard. Life is so damn hard. Sometimes I feel like I'm the man. To get to be a part of this community during times like that is something I would think most people in this country do not understand. It's what this country was built on, people taking care of each other. And I think that agriculture, the agricultural community, always rises to the occasion to help somebody in need because it could be us and there'll be people standing in your door bringing hay, bringing food, building fence, whatever it takes to put you back together they're going to give a par every part of them that they can to try to help that happen. And, and that's part of all of this. Um, the love that people have for the land, for the resources, for each other. We live by a code of ethics that it's not written. There is not a manual. Cowboy is a guy that when he shakes your hand, he looks at you, looks you in the eye. He knows the difference between right and wrong, and if it's wrong, he's not going to do it. You learn the hard way. If you mess up, you get in trouble. What we do is dangerous. I mean, you hear of accidents every day. People get hurt. I mean, roping cattle, it's uh, it can be wild, but there's a reason for this code of ethics and the, the unwritten laws of the cowboy world is it's... It's because the old guys, they had all these train wrecks and they figured out, hey, this is what we need to do and there's a reason for them. And if you break them, you're probably gonna get in trouble or hurt.